Nope. Hello all. Can you hear me first of all? Okay, nice. I'm gonna take a picture. If anyone is not uh, okay with that, please hide yourself. That's obligatory for my mom. She never believes that the people come and hear me talk. So yeah, kind of a thing. So welcome to my talk, Gridlock, uh, the dual-edged uh, sort of EV and solar APIs in grid security. Fair warning, uh, this talk is PG-17, which means I love saying fuck and shit. So if uh, you're not comfortable with that, can you please raise your hand? Everyone's okay with that? Really, thank you for that. Uh, that's me, I'm Vangelis Thikas. I'm the CTO at the penetration testing firm which specializes in uh, green energy, energy renewable and everything else, EV and uh, PV penetration testing. What? Okay. That's me, I'm Vangelis Thikas. I'm the CTO of a penetration testing firm uh, called Atropos. We are uh, testing mainly EVs and PVs. My research interest is mainly APIs for IoT and for the past couple of years, malware, ransomware and other, and other things that might get me killed, but yeah, that's just me. So, uh, this talk is about solar panels. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea how they work. I'm not a solar panel specialist. I'm an API specialist. This talk is about APIs. If you thought that you're going to see any kind of uh, solar shit or, I don't know, firmware uh, things, uh, you're on the rock talk, sorry about that. Quick intro, uh, there are two kinds of installations of solar panel. The one is home uh, panels, which is from 1 kilowatt to 10 kilowatts. And then there are plants, which is from 200 kilowatts to 20 megawatts. The home are usually on roof and they're integrated there. Uh, the plants are maximizing profit and minimizing cost because, yeah, capitalism and shit. So. The solar market, it has several big players. They're mainly Chinese. Lots, and I mean lots of white label providers that provide generic implementation. We are gonna see that they're really rushing to market and they have over 30 million current installations the past week that I checked. Yeah, you can see that uh, we are moving towards solar panels, so more and more solar panel uh, energy is being used. Yeah, that's what a solar panel is. It consists of many cells, blah, 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 things I don't understand, things that if you understand, I'm really happy with you because you're really smart. But do you know what that is? So that's Fortnite. My older son is playing Fortnite and he loves it. And apparently everyone who wins him either is a cheater or I don't know, a hacker. And uh, once upon a time, there was a guy, Tesla 2004, that kinda kicked his ass. So we went after him for no apparent reason, other than me being petty. So what's the solar market? So the solar market generates more than a terawatt globally. A terawatt is what, a little bit less than what uh, the states, the USA, is consuming every day. Uh, it's cheaper to produce, it has low maintenance, and it can run unsupervised. But as it is expensive to store, uh, it is easier to throw it to the grid, which, yeah, I don't know if you understand what they are doing. They are just throwing and depending on stuff uh, that is not uh, there every day. I'm introducing you horror scenario. The horror scenario was a scenario that was uh, built by a really smart guy that I cannot really pronounce his name because it has too many syllables. Sorry about that, uh, Marcus. I'm gonna read it. It's the only wall of text that I'm going to read. The power grid needs to maintain a constant balance between supply or power. Its supply exceeds demands. There is, however, a limit to this countermeasure. So they're doing some countermeasures. We need to maintain balance, but especially in Europe, 
power grids are in their wind, which means that nations are constantly exporting and importing power to each other, and power grid regulators have made agreements, blah, blah, blah. What that means is that if you take down Germany, you're probably going to take down France, you're probably going to take down Spain, probably the whole continent. So, yeah, that doesn't sound good to pretty much anyone. This is uh, a practical uh, solar uh, power supply during the eclipse in Germany and how it was theoretically proven with some math I don't really understand that uh, if you take down enough solar pan panels, you are going to take down the power grid for enough time. Again, mathematical models, I'm a simpleton, I don't understand uh, what uh, they're doing, but uh, it says that at least Germany and France, for uh, as far as I know, uh, cover 35 to 50% of its power using only PV installations, which means if you take them down, they would have huge problems. Horror scenario had uh, several CVs on one uh, inverter, SMA. Uh, they chained them for RCE. They RCE on those devices and they interfere with the devices to destabilize the grid. What we are going to see today? We are going to see whole scenario on steroids. Uh, we are fortunately, we're not going to get any CVs because everything is going to be done with APIs. Cloud doesn't give you any CVs. You know that. Uh, we don't need any physical access. We don't need to be nearby. We can be in our beach house in Greece while hacking uh, PVs. We could brick and mans. We're, we're inverter agnostic because we are just using the cloud and we're looking at more or less a little bit over 500 gigawatt hours. Quick intro on my tool set, Deer Search, Burp Suit, Zadex Decompiler, APK Lab.io, which unfortunately is no longer working. One small droplet on DigitalOcean, so done IO, so that I could find more people, and basic web application penetration testing. Steps that uh, I was doing, I uh, followed. I tried to find the demo account. If I couldn't find the demo account that registered a new account, I would find obvious, and I mean really obvious, web issues. I try find to control devices by exploiting those obvious issues. And I would really want to hack Tesla 2004 because he kicked my son's Fortnite. My results. Solarman, Sunsync, Solax, Growat, Inzecon, Foxes, everyone, platform admin. Solarman, I couldn't uh, upgrade uh, firmware. The other thing is, uh, I don't know who of you are a researcher in here, but you are going to get a lot of those ads. So if you are researching for PVs, you are going to get a lot of uh, PV ads. If you are researching for, I don't know, sex toys, you're going to get a lot of ads for sex toys. And this goes to all your house, so yeah, not a great thing. The disclosure was a train wreck. Uh, I have been trying for the past three and a half years uh, to disclose. Only one and a half vendor responded and acted on the disclosure. The disclosure had everything that they needed uh, to do. Uh, I tried really, really hard to get any reaction. I emailed, I Twitter, I, f I called them on their phone. I couldn't do anything else other than drive there and talk to them, but that's not feasible, I guess. Okay. Uh, the responses. Solarman fixed in five days. Sunsing responded after three years. It's no longer no response. After my OWASP talk, they did respond and try to fix it. Solax auto responded. They responded to Twitter DMs and then they went uh, uh, well. Uh, Growat asked me where I'm from because that makes sense. Uh, and Injecon didn't do anything. So I know you're here for the zero days. I'm not legally allowed to release the zero days, but I can talk about them, and if you have common sense, you can find pretty much everything. What's the plan? I really want them to fix it, really. I, I just want to act on it and fix it. Uh, I want to prove that uh, you can control gigawatts of power effectively, destabilizing uh, country power grids, help avoiding global outages, and uh, I don't know, make, uh, make the whole world a safer place, I guess. What did I found? IDOR, RCE, broken authentication, broken authorization, IDOR, IDOR, IDOR. 
what did I get? Lots, and I mean lots, I mean a couple of million, couple of tens of million uh, of personal data, access to administrative accounts and panel, ways to man manipulate and break panels, access to internal networks. You can see how many gigawatts you could uh, control from uh, their panels. I'm not going to list them. And yeah, I know there are more uh, clouds, but um, yeah, I couldn't hack some of them. And also my wife didn't allow me to buy any more inverters because I don't know reasons. Solarman. Uh, Pretty huge uh, player, IDOR on the user ad functionality. I could add a user with any privilege on any group. Groups and organization were consecutive integers, which means I could pretty much uh, add the user to every group with admin privileges. What did I get? Full functionality, potential GDPR violation. I love that I should say potential because I didn't get it, but this was GDPR violation with leaking user and company data. Information on uh, plants and power generated. Really good response. They fixed it in five days. They chased for verification. So all in all, good for them. SunSync is uh, probably one of the biggest players. You don't know them because they're white label. So yeah, you, you might, if you have a PV, you might have this backend, but with another labor in front. And there are issues where yeah, there was missing the whole point of uh, authorization altogether. If you're taking pictures, take that picture because you're going to see that slide a lot for a lot of uh, platforms, full functionality of the application, again, potential GDPR violation because we are, we are not violating the GDPR, information on plans, interact with the plans, firmware update, because who doesn't want to firmware update on everyone, backdoor to the network, platform admin. That's uh, all the gateways. You can see we're looking at half a million gateways and that's all the firmwares. So you could just Upload the firmware and do whatever you, you want uh, with that. The disclosure, but I want to say that after my AWASP talk, uh, their CISO reached out and he was pretty furious that, uh, that my emails, uh, phones and everything else didn't reach to him. He was pretty cool. Uh, they said they fixed it. They did not. I reached out uh, last week and told them that I'm going to say that and he said, no, we fixed them. So yeah, you do what you want with that information. Growat is probably the biggest and I mean the biggest uh, player in there. Uh, I wasn't allowed to buy a Growat uh, uh, a device because it was like 5k and my wife told me that you're not allowed to spend 5k for personal research so I had to google some serials and then me being me I'm doing that I don't need it I don't need it I find some broken one for 200 euros so I bought it and then I had full functionality on everything what was the vulnerability I don't know, pretty much everything. They didn't check anything. So full functionality of the application, potential GDPR violation, interact with the plans, firmware update on gateway, back to the network, platform admin, all in all, you know, terrible shit. How did the uh, disclosure go? Dear customer, due to the spring festive holidays, we can reply in time. Thanks for your understanding. That was January 26th of 12, 000, uh, 2022. They do have a lot of spring festive holidays in China, I guess. Would you please advise which country you're from? Because it makes sense. If I'm from Greece, they shouldn't fix it. But if I'm from, I don't know, the States, it should. And then while I was researching, I also found that. Three years later, Growat vulnerability disclosure policy. Growat takes product security very seriously and is committed to protecting our users and their data. You know what? Fuck off, Growat. Grow, grow a pair, respond to the disclosure uh, emails, and do something. They're the same thing. They didn't respond. They can go do a thing. I don't know. Solax. 
is the fifth bigger or fourth there in the fifth, uh, one of the five biggest uh, providers in there. They were pretty good, and I mean pretty good. They had only one idor, but that idor was really, really good. So uh, when you were editing your user, you were also passing your user level. So when you see user level user, you usually end up writing, I don't know, user level administrator, user level super administrator, or user level root. So remember that slide? Full functionality, potential GDPR violation, information, interact with the plants, firmware update, backdoor to the network, platform admin. You're going to see it a little bit more. Sorry about that. Sorry for repeating, but they're all shit. Uh, yeah, that's 21,000 pages of installations. You can do the multiplication. That's a lot, and I mean a lot of devices. That's some EV chargers that uh, they're still not there, but you can see the demo in there because I'm admin, as I said. Thank you for conducting Solid's cloud support. We are extremely busy at the moment, and that moment has taken them three years. They're going to respond at me. Then I was starting calling. They didn't answer my calls. Finally, I just tweeted because it's Twitter, not X, fuck Elon Musk. And uh, I just tweeted, can someone tell me what I should do with Solex? Then they said that. So is there a problem with that? Can you tell us what uh, the issue is? I told them, yeah, I sent an email to that, 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 and that. Let me check. That was their answer. The, if you can see, I don't know if it's possible, that's 2023. So they're either checking really hard or they're just ignoring me. Again, Solax, not cool. In Zecon, there are smallest, so just uh, 30,000 or 40,000 installation. Uh, it's, they're based in Spain or Italy, I don't remember. Sorry about that. They were missing the basic concept of authorization. All IDs were consecutive integers. And again, full functionality, potential GDPR, interact with the plants, firmware update, backdoor, platform admin. Sorry for repeating myself, but they're shit. So you can see that we can also see the RAM, the storage, and there is a really, really small button of, uh, at the top. Can you see it? It says sell. So you can just click on there and get a sell on each device. Again, you can also do, I don't know, reports, stop it. And you could also disable all their protections, which means that uh, if you were someone who wants to do harm, you could make the, uh, that thing be on fire. You could literally burn shit up remotely. Does anyone want to guess how the disclosure went? I called them and they just dropped the phone on me. When I said I want to do a, a vulnerability disclosure, I just heard the toot, toot, toot. They could also say fuck you, but OK. Foxes is the last one. These have only been around uh, my disclosure for six months. So yeah, it's way above my 90 uh, days. But uh, yeah, still not good. Uh, they were pretty good, too. They had only one issue. Their password reset was not that good. So they had, uh, I don't know, most of the Chinese companies now, nowadays have a password reset that says, get, uh, we send you a four digit pin. That pin was brute forcible and uh, the user ID was consecutive integers, which means you could pretty much reset everyone's password with a Python script with for loop. Same thing, sorry about that. Full functionality, Yada, Interact, Firmware Update, Backdoor to the Network, Platform Admin, you name it, they have it. Again, anyone want to guess the disclosure? So enough for the photovoltaic, let's go to EV chargers. 
just a reminder, we are not after the power grid, we're after a guy who is named Tesla 2004. He does probably doesn't own a panel, but he or his mom has a Tesla. So let's go up after some EV chargers, right? Project EV, 2000 installation in the UK. Growat uh, based again, Department of Transport approved, that's in the UK. Growat and Shenzhen are China based companies. Can you see the issue in this uh, uh, request? Anyone? No, it's not an either. Uh, you would wish it was an either. There is no authentication at all. So you were authenticating on the application, you were saying, yeah, I'm demo with the demo password. And then all the other requests didn't have any kind of authentication, any kind of JWT or cookies. They were just doing, yeah, he said he was that, let's go with our lives. Fully liking authentication, check for a valid combination only once on login. Charger IDs were consecutive numbers, so it could be easily, and I mean really easily, brute forced. Yeah. Full functionality, lock and lock, remote, backdoor, break all the devices, platform admin. Disclosure. Oh, my lovely disclosure. Did not respond for weeks. Only responded when I had to reach out to BBC. Eventually fixed after a failed first attempt. You really don't want to have uh, to resend the message and say, yeah, you know that fix? That's not actually fixed, so you have to try harder. They have a stateless login or whatever the fuck that means. I'm not going to test it anymore. Also, do you remember the, the Growat uh, PV? They have the same thing, they just fix it for the EV. I don't know why. I don't know. EV box, uh, pretty big uh, on, uh, on the market. Uh, they have around 400,000 charging points. They're based in Amsterdam. Uh, they were acquired by NC. They were really, really, really good. They had a pretty solid API. Wanna guess? Let's play a guess game. What's the issue in here? No one? Come on. It has, when you update your user, you're also passing your role. Why would I pass my role? So let's try admin, account owner, uh, owner and tenant admin, because I also want the fucking server. I just, I just don't want only the EV chargers, which means I had access to pretty much everything. Total compromise of everything, potential GDPR violation, full admin functionality, which means I could give money, I could charge back, I could do financial shit, like it was really, really bad. But responded in just two hours. They fixed it in 24 hours, double check that everything was fixed. Excellent response. I'm happy when I see this kind of uh, responses. Oh, my lovely wall box. I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, EVs. I personally got that band in the UK, so they probably hate me. So 200,000 users, they're based in Barcelona, uh, merged with Kensington, and they're aimed to raise 300 million USD. Probably not because they're banned now. They had a second level IDOR. Uh, anything in the request body was not validated. I had found four different instances on uh, this in the API, which means I found something, they fixed it, then I went to something else and said, fix that too. And then I said, I'm not doing a free penetration test for you. Fix your shit, check your, uh, your proper uh, authentication. Total control over all chargers, lock and lock. No way to update uh, firmware, uh, potential GDPR violation, unfortunately not platform admin. So. They responded the next day. They fixed in a couple of days. They rearranged, re-engaged after a month. I found the second issue. Uh, they fixed it in a couple of days again. Then they wanted to engage to provide the site of their new hardware platform, which meant I had to find that I had to sign an NDA and not talk about it, which, no, thanks. I don't, I don't do NDAs. And then, as I said, Charger pulled amid warnings, hackers could attack national grid. So yeah, 
We're getting there. Kudos uh, to the UK government. Uh, I think that's the last of the private ones. EO Charger, EO Hub, uh, it was the first charger in the UK. It had a lot, and I mean a lot of teething problems. Uh, it had around 15,000 uh, users estimated, and it's a fucking Raspberry Pi, which can be easily rooted. I had no uh, bootloader security, uh, and I was able to recover not only me, my good friend, uh, who is now not with us, uh, Mike Polidoro, uh, the full source code, and I mean two Python scripts because that was their source code, uh, with hard-coded credentials and full documentation. Okay, let me show you something in there. Means you could potentially full decryption, total control. You could mimic the server communication. You can make the, the devices be part of a botnet, potential GDPR violation, credentials leakage, and platform admin. They tried. I'm not going to be. Uh, but with them, they responded in a timely fashion. They worked, uh, worked hard into reworking pretty much everything. And then they introduced their new and improved EO Mini, which was still a Raspberry Pi. So all in all, they tried at least. My uh, personal opinion, take it with a pan uh, pinch of salt because I'm not a hardware expert. Uh, Raspberry Pi are valid prototyping uh, device, but not good to put into production. They're easily extracted all their data. They're easily routable and there's no secure bootloader. Last one, and we should be off. Public chargers. Uh, I have looked after ChargePoint, which is an American electric vehicle. It's one of the top three public chargers providers in the world. A good friend told me that when someone says he's one of the top three, he's the third. They went public in 2021, and they had a publicly expo exposed, unauthenticated GraphQL endpoint with introspection enabled. It was potentially leaking their full schema and no authentication parameters were to be seen. So you could pretty much do whatever you want, but CMA, CMA and crime alert. API research is really, really, really tricky on that. Never ever interact with a device that you don't own. If you mistakenly do it, notify the, men, the vendor immediately and stop doing whatever you are doing because you don't want to end up in jail. At least I don't want to end up in jail. They responded in an hour. They fixed it in uh, the same day. Excellent response. Uh, they acknowledged the issue. I could have checked further, but uh, as I said, my goal is to stay outside of prison. So yeah, that was probably a wise choice. Uh, for your uh, takeaways, go with a provider that will act on problems. So no random uh, white labels. Try to isolate IoT devices on their own villa, uh, villains. Vulnerabilities will happen and expect them to happen. Also, just a heads up, if your device will be on fire, your private villain will not really help. So take that under consideration. And for, being, uh, for those being vendors, know that authorization is not equal to authentication. Push to market cannot always be the excuse. I understand that you have to rush to market because you are a startup, but after you are in the market for five years, you have to secure your seat or you will end up in one of your really uh, bad lists and pen test your things. Not by me, by anyone. Do uh, try to secure uh, yourself. That was me. Thank you.